In this video, we will discuss CSI Cross Revit, a plugin for Autodesk Revit that enables bi-directional data transfer for CSI software products, ETAB, SAP, and SAFE. Today we will be talking about ETABs. Before we get started, let's look at the supported interoperability for CSI Cross Revit. As you can see, CSI Cross Revit offers numerous interactions between various CSI software and third-party products. Today we will be discussing Revit and using CSI Cross Revit to bring models into ETABs, make changes in ETABs, and then bring the model back to Revit through CSI Cross Revit. As you can see, there are other options available to the user, including CSI Detail and CSI CrossCAD. These videos can be seen on our website at csiamerica.com. Okay, let's open up Revit. Here is the model we'll be using here today. As you can see, it has beams, columns, floors, and walls. So what we'll do, we'll go up to the Add-ins menu, and you'll notice once CSI Cross Revit has been installed, an external tools option, pull-down menu, appears. CSI Cross Revit only exports the analytical objects in the Revit project. It's important to check the walls, floors, openings, and structural columns, and structural framing elements you want to export to ETABs that are associated with an analytical element. It's also important to check that the Revit analytical elements are correctly connected to each other so as to ensure the stability of the ETABs model. There are four different options available to the user. What we'll be doing here today is exporting to create a new ETABs model. As you can see, CSI Cross Revit counts the elements in the Revit project and displays the export to create new ETABs form. As you can see in this specific model, we have a number of grids, analytical members. We're going to bring in some panels. Uh, there are point loads, line loads, and area loads that will be included in this model as well. So we simply just select the categories of Revit elements to export. If you've selected some elements prior to starting the command and wish to only export those elements, check on this corresponding box near the bottom of the form right here. I haven't selected any, that's why this is disabled. Let's go ahead and click OK. You can see the export to create new ETABs form is shown and displays the progress of the export. So it's, it's found the story levels, the grids, all the load cases, all the analytical elements that are to be included in the EXR file, which is to be created once I click OK. Give this model a name. Once you have saved the file, let's go ahead and open up ETABs. To create a new ETABs model from your Revit project, you should not have any model open, and not even an ETABs blank model. By default, ETABs creates a new model based upon your EXR file. So now underneath the file menu, we'll go to import Revit structure EXR file. The top section of this form provides access to more forms, which lets you specify how Revit levels, materials, and families are imported. So we can take a look at the levels. It tells you the story, height, elevation information regarding this specific model. We can take a look at some material that have been included in this specific model as well, exported directly from Revit. Any material property with, say, a zero value or unrecognized section with the default material displaying a warning, which is not the case for this specific model. You can make changes to it. You can simply select on a Revit structure material mapping, click edit, and it allows you to make changes directly to the material property data. Let's take a look at the total frame sections that are being imported into this model. So these are all the different Revit family types that have been imported. You can see the frame section mapping form is displayed. So the first three columns displayed in the original Revit family type, original family name, and the material assigned to any section imported from Revit. The fourth column is the ETAB section the Revit section is mapped to. And the final 
column describes how the section is mapped or created. If only the ETAB section column is editable. When ETABS imports the Revit data, it initially tries to match Revit section names to ETABS section names. It first searches through the loaded ETABS database sections. But if no match is found, ETABS then searches all the ETABS section property files via XML. Let's go ahead and import the file. Okay, here is the model that came in. You can see all of the elements have been imported correctly. Sometimes the beams and column sections have changed. So if those elements are updated, you can save that file and those updated elements can be imported back into Revit. Okay, let's open up a specific elevation. In this case, let's take a look at elevation number three. We'll go ahead and add some brace elements. To do that, we'll click on the quick draw brace tool on the left hand side. We'll select X bracing and we'll just add a few in here. I just want to make some changes to this model so it can update correctly in Revit. We'll now add some wall elements. Okay, I'll go ahead and save this model. Then I'll go to File, Export, Revit Structure EXR file. We'll save it as the same name. Now, let's go back to Revit. This time, let's go to External Tools. This time, we're going to import to update existing Revit project from eTabs. Here's the import from eTabs to update Revit project. It recognizes the columns, structural framing, floors, walls in the initial project. The same number of columns have been imported back, but you'll notice the number of structural framing and walls have changed because I added some braces and I added some walls. On the left side of the form, you can control the types of eTabs objects to import into the Revit project and mapping of ETAB sections to Revit types. So we can take a look at perhaps some frame sections. For braces, a W10 by 49 was recognized in ETABs. It become, belongs to the Revit family name and the Revit family type recognizes that W10 by 49. The same can be done for wall sections because those are the two types of objects which I added to the ETABS model. Now if we click OK, the Revit project will update. It goes through updating existing Revit project from ETABS and you'll notice the additional braces and walls have now been updated properly back into Revit. One thing I'd like to note is taking a look at any issues that may arise in the log file, which is generated once you bring a model from Revit to eTabs and vice versa. So let's take a look at that. So this gives you all the specific information as to the versions that you are using. But if any issues arise, they will be listed in this specific document, this log file. So you can see I have added brace elements and these are the numbers that are associated with it. I've added some walls and all the information is included in this specific file. So if there were, were any connectivity issues, some sections that were not recognized, those issues will be documented in this log file. I also recommend you taking a look at the CSI CrossRevit manual which goes through all the steps that I just went over in great detail and gives you information directly about Revit and ETABS data exchange, which data is actually imported, which is not. If I scroll down a little bit, you can see that data imported into ETABS when creating a new model 
gives you specific information about what items are included and what are not. So this is very important information, so I recommend taking a look at the CSI Cross Revit manual uh, to get more detailed information.